Yo, what's going on, Andy? Roddy Brothers Stevani's here, Command Center Wargaming. Fantastic. Today, we're going to have a bit of a chat about the new 9th edition starter set uh, that just came out. Oh, well, it just didn't come out, but they got announced uh, for Games Workshop uh, for 9th edition. Um, now, it's not actually for starting players. It's more for veteran players and more seasoned players that uh, that are meant to be expanding their army. Uh, Games Workshop saying that, like, um, it's got starting elements in there so you have like enough you know units to sort of for each player to sort of have a have a game but it doesn't come with any dice and or any measuring tools or quick guides or stuff like that and what they're saying is basically that um you know they've taken those those that the plastic out from that and then put it into more minis um and uh yeah there are a lot of minis in the box but anyway this picture here that's not the that's not the indominus crusade box um, just thought I'd share some stuff I'm working with um, with you at the moment. Just doing up the Fell Blade from Alpha Legion. I've got my Glaive and my Falchion is done. Um, I've got this guy at the back here too. You can't really see the photo, but uh, I'll chuck him on the channel later. He's going to be my Saboteur. And then I've got my Exodus guy here uh, as well. You notice there's a bit of flash on my Fell Blade. I've, I've actually cleaned all that up. Um, you can't even see it in the undercoat, but uh, all good. So yeah, fantastic. Uh, let me know, you know, what you're working on down below. You guys are going to start a new army up for the ninth edition. Um, I've got most of the armies. I'm thinking I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to start a custode or finish my custodes and get play a bit more custodes um, in ninth edition. I think uh, if I continue to play. But anyway, yeah, just wanted to share what I was working on, and let's get to the actual box. So. Here's the box here, the Dominus uh, Crusade box. You can see just by the picture, it's very, very beefy, a very, very beefy box. So I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee, guys and girls and people, because I've got uh, fumes in here from all the paints. I've got like uh, like three Sicarins, uh, three Domilicles, Rhinos, uh, the paint, the Fell Blade, uh, about a couple of characters all... All painted, uh, undercoated, and it's it's a bit stinky in here. So just gotta yeah keep the uh, the airways clear. But anyway, all good. Um, so look, what I'll do is I'll I was thinking I'll, I was gonna play these. I'll play these. I won't I won't include the music because the music kind of sucks in my opinion. Just a note note there um, that they've actually done this little animation here with the glowing the lights, um, which is pretty cool. The um the R on the logo is <laughs> why don't I just fix it? Oh anyway, all good. They've already printed everything on it anyway. Oh hang on, is that what they've tried to do now? They've tried to animate it so that anyway, look, you know what? Let's just leave that later. It's it's a garbage logo. Okay. So um yeah, so this is a new box. Um it's looking really good. I'm really optimistic about it. Um like I have some thoughts on it. There are a few things I like, a few things I don't like. Um, I have, you know, looked at, you know, some other YouTubers as well, and and I've got some responses to their opinions and stuff like that as well, um, you know, and some some points to expand on. Um, but look, overall, I'm hearing that the box is worth. I, I'm hearing it's going to come out at around about uh, two hundred and twenty pounds, uh, and I'm I'm hoping, like, I mean, that equivalence right now to about maybe 400 Australian. Um, I'm hoping it's not that much because if it's that much, I'm probably not going to get it. Like, even though there is a lot in there. Um, but yeah, I think that's just a bit too cheap, uh, Steve. I think that, you know, the the, the maximum that I would pay uh, for this would be, um, would probably be like 320-ish, yeah. Like that, that's, that's, that's sort of my price. Uh, maybe 350, I might consider it. Uh, but the thing is, is I've already got heaps of Necrons, I've already got heaps of Primaris. I know there's new units in there, but, you know, like I could buy those individually. Um, you know, yeah, just a point of note, when people first started seeing this picture, um, they, they're actually, yeah, so just to clarify, to my knowledge, uh, the terrain here, these buildings are not actually in the box set. They're not actually part of the box set. Um, a lot of people were thinking that we actually got these terrains in the box set, um, like this building here. Uh, to my knowledge, that isn't the case. Uh, this is just terrain that Games Workshop have just sort of stuck around for presentation. Um, but there we go. So we've got the whole box there and its contents. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of plastic in the box for sure. 
Um, you know, depending on what the price point will be when it gets released is another story. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so there's another there's another trailer uh, with the new art style that I'm not really into. It basically just said Gilliman's back, you know, blah 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 blah. You know, it's the same stuff as before. Um, I'm still trying to like work that character out, like that Judy Car or whatever it's called. I, I really dig him. I really I call him the Kano Chaplain because he's got like what. He's got like this like half face like Kano from Mortal Kombat, um, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so let's move on. So the first thing you get is Promaris Captain. Um, Promaris Captain is pretty cool. Um, he's got kind of like an iron halo on steroids over there on the top, which is cool. Um, you know, it's something a little bit different. Um, you can see here he's got one of these knightly helmets, but the knightly style helmet has been like, you know, has been, uh, I think, like, how long were they called? The cow or something? Whatever it is, but basically, it's it's basically propped up so you can see what he's, what's going on underneath. And you can see, like, he's got this, like, rebreather underneath it, which is pretty cool as well, um, which kind of looks all right, but I don't know. I, I don't feel as though, you know, it's really too fitting for a, for a captain to be wearing that. It, it kind of makes him look more like a pilot to me, um, or like a speeder pilot or something like that. I remember, like, this, the... The Marines that would come uh, in the speeder pilot kits and that, you know, would have those sort of like gas masks and kind of one piece sort of rebreathers on and stuff, which makes sense, you know, if they're sort of operating vehicles and stuff. But as a captain, you know, I don't know, like, I think they should either just, let's just pat him in the mask, you know, down. Um, look, I don't know, like, the model's all right. The pose is pretty static, though. Um, you know, the shield looks good, like, the armor looks good, everything looks good. Um, you know, there's a lot of slapped on detail as usual as we're coming to see from a lot of these Primaris Marines now, um, the captains and stuff. It's like, I feel as though there's two polar opposites. We've either got generic Space Marine 506 Primaris um, with nothing, bare bones, nothing on them, you know, um, or like character, just chock a block of detail and iconography and stuff and which, you know, like, is fine. I suppose you can always, like, drill it off or, or sand it off. You know, I do that kind of stuff all the time. Um, one thing that's been pointed out, um, I can't remember who pointed it out, but I, I, I agree with it. Uh, basically, that you've got this sort of, like, you know, cloth part on the front of the Marine. It's kind of coming out from under the armor. A lot of people say it looks a bit awkward. I, I, I would agree with that. Um, you know, and like Dark Angels and stuff like that, Black Templar, they have it, you know, or maybe even, even Blood Angels, but, you know, they, they usually have it like sort of over the armor. They would have looked a lot better, and I do agree with that. I'm not sure I dig the wrestling belt. Um, I think it looks a little bit sort of out of place. It doesn't really make sense, um, you know, to have something like that dangling down if you're in combat, you know. Um, just, yeah, I don't know. just looks a little bit out of place to me. Um, but I think he looks cool. Like, you know, I don't think he's bad. Uh, I'd probably rate... I'd rate the model. Like, I'd probably buy it. Um, actually, you know, I don't think I'd buy it as an individual model. Uh, I would definitely paint him up, though, um, in the kit. Yeah, I don't think I'd just go out of my way to pay, like, you know, 70 bucks or whatever just to buy this dude. But, you know, let me know in the comments down below. Um, then we've got the Primaris Lieutenant, of course. Um, who actually looks quite different to the usual run of the mill lieutenants, uh, which uh, you know, which is kind of cool. Um, I like his gun; it kind of almost looks like a Volkite um, charger. Uh, it might even say here. Does it say there is it like a Volkite? Yeah, it is. It's a Neo Volkite pistol. So it is a it is a Volkite pistol, and it's really good to see like some of the older tech coming back over um, from from uh from the horus heresy over to these guys i mean because that's when these guys are meant to be created the promaris and also like i mean even the helmets you know like promaris helmets are offshoot of the 30k um legionaries right so you know sort of like with that sort of like downward sort of um you know shape of the of the mask instead of that sort of like frowning grill um so that that would make sense you know that these guys would be pulling out the weaponry um which is something I'll discuss a little bit later in terms of like the technology and stuff, uh, some inconsistencies. So I'll probably forget, so I'll talk about it now quickly. Um, so just there is another unit. Uh, it's like a little bike, a little buggy, and it's wheeled and stuff. And and I'll, I'll show it a little bit later probably, but uh, it's I, I feel as though it looks okay. 
you know, and but it doesn't really fit with Space Marines. It looks more like a Gene Sealer cult vehicle to me. Um, the other thing is, is that it doesn't make sense to me that, like, you know, you've got all these armoured guys who are going out of their way to, like, deck themselves out with armour. You've got, like, you know, dreadnoughts of armour, kind of all this kind of stuff, and then, you know, they're going to be running around on open-topped vehicles. Like, I feel as though the buggy should have been closed-topped. Um, and, you know, the turret on the top could have been there. You know, I suppose maybe that could have been open-topped. Um, I don't think there's a picture of it here because it's in another document, but um, you can check it out. Like, it's... You know, like, this is from yesterday's news, so it's not like we haven't already seen all this yet. Um, but, um, yeah, but it will be here somewhere. I'll have a look for it later, probably. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I'll just go quickly to the Warhammer community page. Let's have a look quickly here to see if it's... There it is. So, beyond the box. So, we've got, we got this guy here. And... Um, and here it is. Here's the buggy. So you can see it's kind of like there's a lot of memes going up right now. Mario Kart and all this kind of stuff. I actually personally think it looks like a cross between the Nod buggy and the Tumbler from Batman. So the Nod buggy from a game called Command and Conquer Tiberium Sun and then the Tumbler from Batman. Most of the wheels and a bit of the cart. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me having this front part, you know. And you've got a, kind of got this like cross hilt sort of shield up front. Like all this could have been enclosed. You know, like, you could have at least had it given him a canopy coming over. And then, you know, even if it wasn't, like, you know, fully enclosed, but something like a land speeder, whereby, you know, you had the, you know, you have that sort of blast shield in front of something. Because, I mean, this looks ridiculous, really. I mean, you've got this minigun, you know, here, with this blast shield on the front, and it's so small. Like, what's that going to do? You know, like, it's just the bullets, the guy, the Marine is so big, it's just going to completely negate that shield. Um, you know, like, and, and I feel as though it's a little bit unrealistic in that sense of proportion. Um, but with that said, like, I do really like the idea behind it, and, and I like the unit. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to grab one of these. Um, because, like, the other thing, the other thing, let me, let me just put it to you like this, right? So, it kind of contradicts the technology that the space, like the technology direction that the Promaris are going, because, you know, if you have a look at the actual sort of like flow of the technology, you know, we've got a land radar, and then that upgrades to hover technology, right, which is a repulsor, okay? Then you've got a rhino, okay, and then that, the, the next generation weapon of transport for Promaris is hover technology, which is... Uh, the, the uh, I can't even remember what it's called now, something, redeem me, pulsar thingy, or whatever. It's a, you know, the, yeah, <laughs> anyway. Um, and, and then, so then, but then you go, like, tactical marine, you've got a land speeder, which is hover, but it basically goes through to, you know, over to wield. So you're actually going from, like, you know, so you're actually going backwards in tech in a way. And it's quite odd because... You know, everything, everything Primaris so far has been Hovertech. And now all of a sudden, like, they've decided, okay, well, we're going to move from Land Raiders to Repulsors and, 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 and the, you know, and, and upgrade our Rhinos to Hover, you know, vehicles and stuff. And then, but then we've got Skimmers already. We've got Land Speeders already, which are fast attack. But then we're basically going to, like, drop that back now and go for some wheel stuff. Um you know, whatever. Look, it's a it's a it's a little plastic man game, right? A little army men game. So, you know, we're not gonna pull out the engineering on it too much. But it's just something to just something to note. Okay, just something to note there. So um cool. All right. So uh over here, go back to the box now, uh for a, for a tick. Uh you can see here we have the units, got the bikers and everything, We've got the necrons, um We've sort of seen that already, so I'll skip down a little bit more. We went through Captain, went through the Lieutenant. The rest of the model I'm cool with. The the shoe looks cool. Love the the, the Volkite gun. Um, I don't know if I would have bothered giving him a Neo Volkite gun. Just give him a bloody Volkite gun, you know, it's cool. But, you know, it is what it is. I like the fact that, you know, a lot of these Marines are sergeants and that. They've got sort of more of these serrated edges coming up now. Um, which is something that I sort of pointed out before um, in the, like, you know, I, I feel as though, you know, the Marines are losing a lot of their sort of 
aggressive silhouette by rounding them off. Um, now, there is an example of, of that still in practice coming um, with the heavy weapons team, but I'll get to that when I get to it. Then we got the uh, Primaris Chaplain. I love that model. I think it's the best Chaplain um, since the since the Chaplain Terminator uh, model. And uh, I 100% I think it is the best Chaplain. It's, it's hands down better than the other Primaris Chaplain with like the hood. Um, who looks to me more like, you know, Dark Mechanicum or something like that. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I love this guy. He's like the Kano Chaplain. He's got that sort of robotic sort of half face. Uh, everything else is there. The skull's there, you know, bolters there. That bolter's looking wicked too. Um, I love that red casing there. Like, it's looking really good. I kind of miss that. Um, you know, back from the, the tactical marines. I know a lot of people just paint their bolt guns black. I, I did the same. I don't bother anymore. But I would always like that red casing. It just adds that contrast to it. Uh, so that's cool. Yep, nothing bad to say about this model. Love it. All good. The Crozius is sweet, if that's what it is. Um, fantastic. And I think, you know, with all the sort of litanies and stuff like that, um, you know, it's pretty important to, to have good models for our, our chappies. All right. So... Uh, yeah. Now, the Judicare, I don't know how you even pronounce it. Uh, yeah, look, I, I must admit, I'm not big on this model, uh, mainly because well, there's a few reasons why. The main reason is just, like, I don't know, I just don't get the sword. Like, I don't get the flat sword. Um, it's cool that they tried to do something different, but I think it looks a little bit too anime. Um, yeah, the boots here are very large compared to the rest of him. Um, I do sort of like this square armor you know, element here, but uh, the rest of it, I don't know, I think they've overdone the pot rivets a bit too much, and, you know, he's got this sort of, like, sort of cloak coming down, which is like a, I don't know, whatever, but yeah, I don't know, and then, like, you've got this, like, you know, freaking hourglass there, I, I just don't get that, I don't know, you know, um, but yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, so it's Warhammer, anything goes, but it just, I don't know, an hourglass, you know, what's he going to do, like, pull someone up for, you know, spending too too long, like, you know, shooting their bolter, like, I don't get it. But anyway, uh, but my main gripe about is, is the face, like, I don't know what's going on with his face, like, is it a face, is it a, is it a mask, like, or is it like a, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know what that face is doing, I don't like it. Um, and then you've got and got this like sort of friggin' Michael Jackson bloody uh, handkerchief thing going over the front of his face, and you know I don't know a face mask thing, you know, uh, like I see a lot of face masks running around in the real world, you know, and I don't, I, I don't know, I just don't like it. I just don't like it. That's it. Um, fantastic if you do like it, but I just don't like it. Um, now these guys are cool. Uh, Blade Guard veterans. These are the ones that resemble the Vitrix Honor Guard very uh, a lot. Um, it's basically Primaris Marines, a little bit of more of this sort of regalia on them, um, and yeah, short uh, sword and board, uh, pretty much, which are cool because you know you get a few of these guys going on the table. Uh, yeah, they'd be awesome for Blood Angels. You know, get get a lot of get a lot more uh, close combat stuff going on. Uh, I'd like to see some of these guys with Thunder Hammers uh, for uh, Space Wolves as well. I think that they look really cool, sort of like with that wolf head. Uh, nothing negative to say about these models. I think they look pretty good. Um, yeah, moving on. So this Blade Guard Ancient, I don't, I don't really, I don't really ship this guy. Um, once again, same issues with the cloak stuff going on. I don't, you know. Is he a sister of battle or is he a is he a space marine? You know, he, he kind of looks like a sister of battle in space marine armor. Maybe he is, um, you know. But anyway, but my main gripe about this model, um, I, I do like this kind of like, uh, you know, sort of like uh, halo around his around his helmet. This is cool too. But my main gripe with it is the arm. So uh, the arm here. It doesn't actually look like there's a shoulder hat pad behind it. Now, maybe it is behind it on the model. I don't know. But it just looks really awkward um, to have that arm just sitting there. And it looks like he's just got one shoulder pad on. And it's kind of just doesn't work with me. Um, you know, it takes a lot of that symmetry out. Like, I think, you know, with Chaos Space Marines, I, I could probably 
except one shoulder pad, you know, because they're sort of like rebels or whatever. But, you know, with Space Marines, everything they do is very cookie cutter. It's very monochrome. It's very regimental. It's very, you know, like the military. It's all sort of ironed out all, all the same. Um, and I, I just, I don't know, it just looks very off-putting. It just looks, looks weird. Here are the eradicate. Yeah, but I, like, yeah, you know, like I'll pass on that one. But, um, yeah, I, I'd probably convert him actually. I'd probably just, you know, get one of these guys and stick that banner next to him or something. Yeah, or chuck a shoulder pad on. The problem is, is that this this sort of front section, the, uh, you know, I imagine it's going to be pretty hard to sort of sand that down um, to get to remove that uh, in terms of conversion. So, yeah, I, I would be inclined to just take the head, take that arm, take that banner, and then just remove that body and just replace it with another Primaris. Um, here we go. So these are Radicators. Really cool name. Uh, really cool idea. I was really looking forward to these guys. Um, but this is an example of just, you know, I don't know, just uber roundness. I feel as though they're just too round. Um, now, the principle behind them, I believe, is that they're meant to have, like, heavier armor because they're, like, heavy, heavy infantry, like, to go up against tanks and stuff like that. Uh, and, and, and I get that, you know, but I just don't feel it quite looks right because it likes, it's like you've got aggressor legs, aggressor head, but then you've got these arms, these tiny little shoulder pads. I don't know why these shoulder pads are so small. The shoulder pads are tiny. Um, yeah, I, I didn't pick up on on fir at first, um, but uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, bad design. I uh, don't like them. I don't like them. It's a shame because if these shoulder pads were just a bit bigger, I I reckon they'd be awesome. You know, I don't know. Just 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 give them like sort of more boxy shoulder pads. They'd be fine. Like even the old tactical marine shoulder pads. They weren't like you know you know completely round. They weren't dome. They weren't spherical. Well, they were kind of spherical, I suppose. But they were sort of like you know they squared off a bit down the end. You know, so I'll just see if I've got one lying around here. I don't. Um, but anyway, yeah, cool. It's Assault Intercessor Squads. Uh, yeah, cool, awesome. It's basically Intercessors with with a with a chainsword and a, some kind of bolter, which is really cool. Um, yeah, awesome, fantastic, awesome. Yeah, that that should have been done a while ago. Um, and then we've got the bikes. Bikes, uh, I reckon, the, you know, the white scars, Dark Angel's going to love them. Um, you know, white scars and all those sort of fast attack armies is going to have a field day of these. Uh, I think that, you know, they look good, actually, the bikes. Uh, once again, you know, you've got flat edges, very sharp edges, flat armored edges. Like, you think about the Dreadnought, you know, so it's all boxy, sort of like squared off, right? And then, you know, these bikes are also squared off boxy. Um, you know, there's only so much roundness you can sort of get, you know, with, with uh with the Marines, you know, it's just because a lot of their, a lot of their tech is really boxy. Like you, you look at all their vehicles, it's all boxy and, uh, tactical Marines. Yes, they had round elements, but you know, for the most part, like it was a bit of a mix between square shapes and round shapes with Primaris, just full round. You need to sort of bring that out a bit, but you know, whatever. Um, they look great. Bikes look great for sure. All right. Then we get on to the Necrons. Uh, so the Necrons, just watch it, just skip through it, because uh, I imagine you would have seen this already. Oh, is my internet going to have a, a wobble? Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay, all right, that no, started again. Okay. Oh, this is the Our domain, but their doom is upon them. Our... <laughs> this is the one with the, the the butler, Alfred the butler Necron, or like the dude from the, the butler from the nanny. Like, for some reason, they've decided to give Necrons this high gothic sort of English accent, like, posh accent, accent, and, like, although I don't mind it, I just don't think it really fits with the Necrons, because the Necrons, yeah, look, I haven't really been big on the Necrons, since, you know, since they started giving them their 50 personalities and things, like, I, I love Necrons, right, don't get me wrong, I've got an army of them. Um, you know, like I think good eight, ten thousand points of Necrons. Um, because they played really well in seventh, and that's where the army was left over from. 
Uh, but, you know, they were always about just being sort of like these mind-wiped machines, which made them brutal. The minute they started adding, like, these dynasties and like that, and, you know, I don't know, it just took away the mystique. We have state. awakened to a galaxy blighted by upstart empires. Like, what do you mean upstart? The, um... why, would a, why would a Necron... Why would, why would a Necron use that word? He wouldn't be talking like this. You know, it's not like part of the real Smart empires. The unworthy now infests our domain. But their doom is upon them. Our king has returned. Would you like some tea? Yes, please. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. And at his word, the dynasties mobilize for war. None shall stand well, against true. us. We are the eternal scythe. We are the conquerors of gods. No, it's not too bad, I suppose. It's not too bad. I can live with it. It's just a crappy little animation anyway. It's not, you know, the definitive, like, you know, voice. <laughs> so, anyway, whatever. So the Overlord looks cool. Dig the Overlord. Like, most of the Necron stuff I like. Um, even the Bucket Necrons, like, people are putting crap on them. Um... Yeah, it fits in. Like, a, there's apparently a new paint scheme as well. Some new paint's going to be coming out in the Necrons. Uh, you could get that pretty easily, probably with some uh, Bafasar gold and probably some of the uh, Agraf, uh, Agrax Earthshade uh, and things like that. I don't think it'd be too hard to emulate, to be honest. Um, there's also some other washes um, from, you know, other companies, Army Painter and that will give you the same effect. But anyway, you know, Games Workshop like waddling paint, right? So they're probably going to make something to set their own brand on it. Um, yeah. And then we've got the Royal Warden. He looks really cool. Now, it's really good because when I first started seeing these Necron Warriors, they looked really kidsy and, and, and sort of, yeah, sort of, uh, you know, juvenile. But uh, no, they're actually shaping up to look really, really good. And they got like their poses and stuff like that, and you know, all different battle damages around the models and things, which are cool. Uh, then you got the Plasmancer, so he's in here. I think I kind of don't mind this guy either. Like, you know, he doesn't have any legs or anything, it's just kind of like this sort of spine that fits in with the old school wraiths, um, you know, which I always love that design, and I think it fits. I know a few people have had some issues with it, but you know, I think it's all right. The whole long jaw thing i i, I kind of get i think it's a bit too long though um could have been cut off to around about here and i think that would have looked a lot more proportionate okay but at the same time i kind of get the shape of it because it kind of takes sort of like that egyptian sort of cross or whatever it's called it's like a, a symbol an egyptian symbol i don't know what it is sorry please don't get treated i, I just forgot Okay, anyway, then we got these uh, Crypto Thralls. Now, they're basically just like flayed ones but in a tin can, a can of tuna, right? Um, a lot of people are hanging crap on these right now. I kind of like them. I think they're actually pretty cool. Um, I think they're different. They're very abstract. Uh, it kind of just, yeah, I don't know. It just looks different. And I like when things are different as long as they don't go silly. And I think that, you know, it helps it give them kind of like this slap together junky kind of feel, uh, which I think really really works. It helps to send like a you know tell a story about the unit, tell a story like they're kind of like these you know just thrown together rush job mishmash front line robots that have been put together with not much thought, um, just to like charge the enemy and stuff like that you know and just throwaways expendable troops. You know, and it's kind of, it's, it's almost like they've been made out of junk. And uh, and I, I kind of like that, you know, I kind of like that. It's some cool stuff. And then the Scorpec Lord. So the sport, here he is. I dig that model. I love that claw, the hand, the guy, everything's good here. Um, the only thing, the legs may be a little bit more square. I don't know, like, it's a little bit round. I don't know about that rounded shape here, but aside from that, look, it's not a big deal. You just get your Dramil, just carve it up a bit, you know, square it off. Um, 
yeah, but you know, like other than that, like it, I dig it. Fair bit of painting. Just make sure if you're gonna get this one, bros and gals or whatever, make sure you uh, make sure you paint these individually, yeah, before you stick them on. It's gonna be a bit, you know, bit inconvenient to paint it when it's all put together like that. Um, Scopec destroyers, yeah. So this is more destroyers here, same as this guy. But he's like the leader. Then you got these destroyers here. Um, yeah, that they look good. Uh, the plasma site, I think, it looks really weird. It's another sort of abstract kind of unit. It's like, so the, the Necron, the Necrons before were, were very, very clean, very, very clean cut sort of uh, robots. You know, very, very not factory fresh, but they were very uniform. Um, I've noticed in these sculpts, they, they're going very, very junky, very kind of abstract, um, and I think, I think it's kind of cool. Especially if you're going to introduce another alien race, which is probably going to be like those drone things, which are going to take over that clean element. So the Necrons kind of, you know, they've got to sort of evolve their shape a little bit. Um, there's a game called Endless Space on PC, uh, which have kind of like these sort of cockroach cyborg aliens. And uh, I can't remember what the Cravers, I think they're called. These guys, the Necrons here remind me of the Cravers. And what they do, they just get junk. They like, you know, they're like Terminator, like cockroach Terminators, but they, they get, you know, all your junk and stick it to them. You know, like they're just augmenting themselves. Kind of like the Borg. Like imagine like a Borg went to the junkyard. Sort of like that. Um, but yeah, that's cool. And then we got the Canopect Reanimator. So it's kind of like your tripod walker. Um, like, uh, I do like it, but you know, there's certain elements to it, like, like this part, I don't, yeah, no, nah, I, I, I dig it, I dig it, it's pretty cool, it's, it's like ripped from Command and Conquer concept art, but, you know, whatever, um, I was trying to think where I saw that before, and it just looks like the tri one of the tripods from Command and Conquer 3 concept art, um, and even the one in the game a little bit, but, you know, whatever, it's adapted design, but it's science fiction, um, you know, it's, it's always find it funny um, with, with Games Workshop, God bless them. It's like, on one hand, you know, someone goes, paints a model, you know, and, and does something with it, you know, slap them, try to slap them with a lawsuit, but, like, you know, they can go off and, and be inspired from, like, uh, and I use that, you know, inverted commas, uh, and be inspired, and they, they just go through and just be inspired from everything and just use everything. I mean, I still remember a couple of years ago, I mean, two years ago, there was that Stargate. It was, like, literally a Stargate for Chaos. And it was, like, man, like, you may as well have just had a Raz bloody head on it, you know, and bloody Kurt Russell friggin' as a model walking up in his SG-1 gear. From memory, it even had, like, all the little Chevron sort of counters and things. But anyway, you know, whatever. It's, it's kind of cool. I, I do like the way Games Workshop do that, though, because, you know, if you've got cool sci-fi, it's just one thing I always love about, like, Warhammer, is that it kind of, um, you know, it, it kind of sort of blended all these, some of my, all, all my favourite sort of franchises. You know, there's a bit of Terminator in there, there's a bit of Aliens in there, there's a bit of, like, you know, uh, a bit of everything in there, you know? So, cool. And here we go, the Warriors. Yeah, so these are Warriors that I was a bit concerned about at first, but uh, no, they look fine. Uh, yep, all good for them. And then the Core Rule Book, which is meant to be pretty thick. Um, we will go through that another time on the channel. Uh, yeah, so apparently it's uh, there's a lot of fluff in here, apparently, a lot of artwork as well. Um, you know, it actually looks pretty thick by the spine as well, but yeah, and then we start to get into here, so it's the Edge of Silence, this is a, this is a booklet, so this is probably a starter book, it's, ah, oh, the data sheets, a bit of lore, this kind of stuff, yeah, and here we go, so here's the, here's the instruction manual, the, the, um, the transfers, no transfers for Necrons, I don't really see that you probably need them although if i do remember i think necrons did have transfers i know that i know that my um uh, my tesseract vault i don't think had them but um but my monoliths i'm pretty sure they had transfers i'm almost certain the monolith had transfers because i remember i put like highly 
the hieroglyphics and stuff. I'm a monolith. I should I should shack them up on the channel actually, because I've got quite a big Necron army, but I never see them because I stopped playing them because they became a little bit sort of redundant in Ave. But anyway, so blah 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 blah. There's more stuff on the way. Fantastic, and that's it. All right, everybody. So there you go. Brother Stevani is here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content today, consider subscribing to the channel and uh, shooting a like on the video. Um, and I'll catch us in the next video. See you then.